Rob Grimes with the IFBTA, and I'm really pleased to welcome our newest global industry partner member, IBM, and also Jason Kelly, who is the global general manager for IBM Blockchain. So welcome to the IFBTA, and, and welcome to a rainy day in Maryland. Uh, it's great. Great to be here. Thanks, Rob. So, so you've actually brought up a whole bunch of different thoughts here. Okay. So first of all, we do have this issue in the industry of you know the term of the year, right? And you go to a trade show, you look up above the booths, and you see what words. So one year it's big data, then it becomes data analytics. Mm -hmm. You know, artificial intelligence is actually AI. It's actually been out there a long time, and you never see that anymore. But somehow it's enabling. But what you've done is you've just simplified it back to just the word data. Right. And so, right. in using the word blockchain, though, what you're talking about is tying together different places of data, uh, different places that data is stored, mm -hmm. and then enabling, right. I think was the other word that you used, enabling uh, the operator and the consumer actually to take advantage of that data. Is that really what it's about? That's exactly it. You know, data that sits static in those silos doesn't have value. Data only has value when it's in motion or when it's being shared, mm -hmm. and when it's being shared accurately and with a purpose, and that's what we're able to do, and we empower that now with a new capability. And I will tell you, you know, it's one of those Look, look, look to the odds. In fact, is there hype? Yes, there's hype around right. blockchain, just like there was hype around big data analytics right. and around AI, just as you, as you said. Now, fortunately, I've had that experience uh, with our company because I've led many of those efforts in different parts of the world. And I've, I've experienced the hype cycle with our clients, which is the best way to do it. So mm -hmm. as you do that, you say, look, first you acknowledge, yes, it's hyped, but the real part of it is when you make this data bring outcomes that people haven't seen before. Right. Well, those other terminology or those other terms haven't gone away. They're right. still there. It's just right. that mm -hmm. they're sort of the latest thing that people want to focus on, and, and blockchain is certainly getting some press on that. But, you know, you started this conversation talking about the consumer, you know, the end user. And the right. end user in our world tends to be sometimes the operator. Mm -hmm. But in this, what we're talking about here is the end user actually being the consumer. So what are the consumer... So, the other part of it is a lot of times when companies think about technology, mm -hmm. they think about what they have to feed in their corporate office, but they're not necessarily thinking about what they have to feed, so to speak, mm -hmm. at the consumer level. So what are the consumer expectations that you mm -hmm. will solve or that you're working to provide solutions for or enable solutions for that really are changing the way that operators should be thinking about technology and, and how they engage IBM? So following that that view of end user first, we think about our current end users, who are us? We're all consumers. And when we talk about food, it's one of my easiest discussion topics because- Everybody understands it. I go, I get to do the, raise your hand if you eat, right? Mm -hmm. And they're in crowd, instant crowd participation. So with that, when you, what are they demanding? We know that the current consumers are willing to pay more for this thing that we call sustainability. Mm -hmm. We know that, that you know, 71 percent of them will pay up to 35 percent premium if it that that product or that service represents their values. That's which is significant. And then you 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 hear this thought of, I want it to you know have the value, and that that, that value means uh, you know either their personal experience with price to value, or what they want uh, when they're consuming. In this case, food. So if that's what they want, if they're driving for that experience and they want the information, that experience comes with some data. Is it what they think it is? Is it, is it, is it sustainable? Um, is it, it, does it contain what they think it contains? You know, this trust. And so consumers are now asking for trust. And then this backs into your question. So if consumers are demanding trust, how do you get that trust? You know, in, in, a, in an environment now where everyone's questioning trust. And this then doesn't say, it doesn't say, oh, let's throw technology at something. So this isn't a sandwich looking for a picnic, staying on the food, th food theme. Instead, it is in fact a saying, how do we solve, how do we get to that outcome? How do we get to trust and transparency? That then drives a conversation of what technology makes sense. And this is where we get to the data. Right. But, but actually, you're using the word trust, which is sort of an interesting thing to be using when you're talking about food. Because in our industry, when they talk about trust, they talk about data security, right? You know, a, a loyalty data, right? They talk about credit card data. The consumer should have trust that if they order online, right? But you're not talking about trust that way. You're talking about trust as it relates to 
what's actually going in somebody's mouth or that they know they're getting what they expected to get. You're putting a whole different label on how people would think about trust as they think about technology. I think that we've evolved um, based on the way we uh, have, have, I think, elevated our expectations as consumers because we know that that information, that data is there and we expect that now. Right. So we're trying to meet their new levels of expectation. With before, what the, what the internet did uh, for, for you know, communications, uh, this thought of the B word, blockchain, you know, will now do for transactions. And so it, it's no longer just trusting when you're online. It's, mm -hmm. you know, shouldn't I be able to see, you know, if I know my package, I can track my package, but once I get it, if it's food, wh where, where did it really right. come from? So you're right. I mean, this, the thought of trust has been expanded, which then expands, you know, the expectations expand what we have to do to deliver those outcomes. Right. So trust in this case is not necessarily also just a trust of safe food which it certainly is because there have been some real incidents in our industry of issues with uh, food handling and safety, which right. is obviously a prime concern. Uh, but trust is also knowing that if you care about sustainability, you care about supporting you know, the, the smaller farmers or where things are coming from, that you actually as a consumer ought to have visibility into it. And you can't do that unless it's all connected all the way up the chain. That's, that's correct. Now, some would say, you know, Every point has to be connected. And I say, eventually, we can get to that. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the most, as much risk or question that we can take out in every step, it's a step in the right direction. So people are saying, well, I'm not gonna do this until everything's linked. Right. Well, if you can just reduce that, that, that risk a little bit, if you take a Walmart, for example, who said, you know, uh, seven, seven days is world class, mm -hmm. which it is, in, in their, when they tried to find a foodborne uh, illness case, you know, say in their, their case they did mangoes. It took seven days in their, 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 in their uh, pilot to, to say, okay, where did that mango come from? Mm -hmm. World class, but even whether it's Walmart or someone, if you're doing that for seven days, that means you're throwing away food for seven days. Right. When they put it on the blockchain, they were able to find it in two seconds. So this is what we're talking about, you know, that, that, that right. difference. Well, listen, I think that, uh, you know, certainly this is a start of a much longer term uh, conversation in the industry, uh, one that we expect IBM will play a key role in. Uh, we're already aware that uh, your engagement in the industry is going uh, well beyond the IFBTA, but thanks to the National Restaurant Association and, and other places that you can bring, oh, well, CES, right. you know, uh, CES seeing, uh, you know, IBM uh, bringing food trust there was something I wasn't expecting to see. So okay. I think that the messaging is there and uh, we want to thank you for your support and, um, and welcome to the IFBTA. Thanks, Rob. We look forward to doing lots of great things together. Great. So Rob Grimes with the IFBTA and it's been a pleasure to welcome IBM uh, as our newest uh, global industry partner and also uh, Jason Kelly, who uh, general manager of IBM uh, Blockchain and Services. Uh, and trust, actually, uh, to the IFPTA. So thank you. Thanks, Rob.